Episode 281, How to Endure a Difficult Life. You're listening to the very best podcast in the world on health, wealth, and happiness. Please remember to leave a review and share with all your friends and family. And here is your host, Lars Hilson. Welcome back to a totally new week of the very best podcast in the world, your only source in the universe for personal supremacy through health, wealth, and happiness. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> One day I'll make it. Uh, there we go. Um, in many religions, uh, there is the term of suffering and, and that life is actually that. Well, I never really could understand why, uh, you know, the, all of the higher beings that all of those people believed in would make it, uh, would make life so that it is, uh, you know, s victim to such a detrimental term, right? Uh, suffering, I think is, you know, not an apt description of what life is about. And in fact, you should work against anything that makes you suffer. And so the idea behind today's episode is to uh, really analyze, uh, you know, what a difficult life is and uh, how to endure it. And uh, that's what we're going to go through today in a very brief episode right after we get to uh, get through our housekeeping Item number one, of which is always that sharing is caring, meaning that, uh, you know, you should share all of the content here in this podcast, not necessarily because you like it, but just uh, for the main reason that if you get people, get your friends and followers and, you know, whatever not to uh, sign up here and listen to the free content, they will not fall victim to the wallet rapists. And those are those guys who are, who are offering and continue to offer this kind of content uh, for a premium price, really a hefty price. And if you've paid that premium price, then they go ahead and say, well, you know, there's a next lesson that is totally secret. You know, you can max out your credit card on it. And then your life will become successful. And uh, then after you've maxed out your credit card, they, you know, drive away <laughs> with their middle finger in the air uh, in their uh, Lamborghini or Bentley or, you know, whatever it is that they have achieved by ripping tons of people off. Uh, and we don't want that to happen to your, you know, to your folks. And so therefore, you know, make sure to share this content. Item number two is uh, that the views herein are my own, do not, ref do not reflect <laughs> any of the, my, my employers, not that I should have any, uh, but <laughs> you know, just in case. And uh, item number three is uh, that uh, the episodes are going to be a bit shorter uh, for the foreseeable future, just simply because uh, I got swamped with uh, so much shit that, you know, it's quite difficult uh, to actually manage to produce the episodes. And so uh, not to sacrifice the uh, uh, the actual quality, the length of the episodes is just going to be shorter. So let's dive into uh, the endurance that you need for a difficult life, uh, right? And let us uh, say goodbye once and for all to that term suffering, uh, which I think is uh, inadequate and uh, is a bit of a downer. Uh, and so therefore, you know, let's just uh, reduce the suffering or let's reduce the difficult life by just striking that term out of our vocabulary once and for all. And, you know, instead, let's call it a difficult life, because at the end of the day, life is never uh, going to be easy. You know, something's always going to come along <clears throat> to, uh, you know, to make the task at hand more difficult than it should be. Right. Uh, you know, things you haven't anticipated, uh, you know, one of those uh, million things that you have anticipated is more likely than not not going to happen. But it's about those things uh, which you don't anticipate. And that's usually one thing which you didn't think of. Let me give you an example. The other day 
we were uh, uh, renovating the living room, which has the uh, the dining room directly attached to it. And we wanted to build this, you know, very special lamp out of a piece of wood that we had salvaged from our attic. Uh, and, um, you know, there were uh, more or less artsy things available, but we wanted to do our own thing. And anyhow, I planned about three to four hours to complete the task. And, uh, you know, we had cable that was running inside uh, of a, well, uh, I don't know what to call it, right? <laughs> out, of a, out of a piece of rope, essentially. Uh, it was running through a piece of rope. And anyhow, it was so difficult to put the fittings onto, <clears throat> onto, the, onto the wire and then, you know, the, whatever. Long story short, it took us three days rather than three hours. And uh, I hadn't really anticipated it. I thought it would be much easier. And the three hours were even on the higher end. Anyhow, um, we had to complete it right? and we wanted to because uh, having, uh, having finished one or we'd finished one and it looked so great that we said, okay, we got to finish uh, the other five as well. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it took us uh, three days on and off to get all of that done and put it on the ceiling and all those, all those, uh, you know, sorts of good things that you know, happen, which you just do not anticipate and uh that's just you know one of the more easy but one of the things that immediately came to my mind and uh that's what i wanted to really make stand out that even uh you know minuscule apparent apparently minuscule tasks can even go south to a degree where you spend a whole lot more time than you anticipated right but uh, it goes to say that if we take it back to a religious context, for instance, right, then we're going to be in a position where it's just going to be like, wow, you know, why did I get struck with this, that, or the other, right? Why was I born with, uh, you know, a handicap, whatever it is? You know, why was I born with bad skin? Or, you know, why was I uh, born with um, whatever it is at the end of the day, right? It's not, <laughs> you know, number one, you have to start to realize that, uh, you know, there's nobody uh, up in the sky meddling uh, and, you know, looking at the gene pool and saying, hey, that kid, I'm just going to piss off. You know, when it gets born, it's going to have uh, deformed whatever. More often than not, it's got genetic purposes uh, or, you know, <laughs> the gene pool that you were born into has been reduced because the uh, uh, because of whatever you know <laughs> at the end of the day and uh, it's not you know you you have to play the cards that you're dealt and you have to play them wisely for those of you who've ever you know been into a poker match right so uh, it's about getting used to the fact and uh, accustoming to it now for me that was uh, for the longest time that I was struggling because I am you know I was born cross-eyed. Uh, I always jokingly say because my mom fell down when she was pregnant with me, but at the end of the day, it's going to have different purposes. I'm quite sure. Uh, however, you know, I took advantage of, uh, of the, of, of the fact that I was born with that, you know, in business negotiations, people got so confused because they didn't know whether, uh, with, with which eye I was looking at them that, you know, I turned the entire, uh, disability to an advantage and that's, you know, really, uh, what it boils down to. Right? And then, uh, you know, in the introduction, I mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's about the million things that you can anticipate and the million and first one that you didn't happens. And that's, you know, to all of you out there who do all of this prepping, right, for every conceivable thing that can go wrong. And um, I beg to ask the question, right, whether uh, or not this uh, preparing for everything takes up so much of your time that, you know, if you're, min <laughs> if you're mediocrely capable of, uh, um, what's the term I'm looking for, of improvising, Right, I think that this uh, entire prep time that you do in your head, uh, you, you, know, you can easily forfeit for one incident where you actually have to improvise. Now, I went through this in a dedicated episode, 
you know, 20 years of being a firefighter kind of gets you into this groove of improvisation uh, that you uh, that you just need. And this, you know, transports into the rest of your life as well, inevitably. And, um, you know, <laughs> but nonetheless, I gave it a shot, you know, and uh, the fact is, when you do all this planning, you'll be so busy preparing, right, that you have no time or much less time for the execution. Not to mention, you know, the quality of what you're going through then is going to be so inhibited because you had no time to actually build up uh, a decent amount of anticipation for the event, right? So I was in a situation where I wanted to be <laughs> extremely transparent uh, with a client. Right. And I wrote down, uh, minusculely, if that is even a word, every minute of the, pretty much every minute of the day I was working for them, you know, only to find out that it was taking me so much time to, uh, plan and, uh, and document everything that, you know, I got less of the work done. And at the end of the day, I had to add extra hours, which were technically my free time. Now, keep in mind, I was impressed with the client, right? And, uh, or I was impressed that they hired me and couldn't really believe it. But uh, at the end of the day, it was just, uh, you know, my limitation, my self-limitation that was, uh, or my uh, degree to, uh, or my, um, uh, what damn it, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's early. Uh, the, uh, uh, the expectation towards perfection that I had, right. And the expectation towards, uh, transparency that I just wanted to be perfect, right. I wanted to be able to document what all that I'd done, uh, of pretty much every minute of the day, you know, to then be able uh, to tell the client, you know, look, hey, here, uh, you know, I got this done. While at the end of the day, they were only interested in results. They didn't even give a flying fuck about all of my documentation and everything. So this goes to say, right, that life is in itself going to be difficult, right? And as soon as somebody tells you, hey, you know, life is about suffering and, you know, just bitch slap them. <laughs> it's about really that unanticipated things happen. And when they happen, you know, think for yourself, whether all that prep time that you invest is going to be worth it. Because at the end of the day, more often than not, at least in my life and people I've worked with, the things that happen are those that you didn't plan for or anticipate. So in that sense, I hope I was able to make sense uh, of, uh, or, you know, get yourself a sense to how you endure a difficult life and uh, hope you have a good rest of your Monday. For those of you who've already had your Monday, if you haven't, have a good Monday and uh, we'll be back tomorrow and we're going to be talking about uh, how one you, you know, don't, uh, it's about reality <laughs> in a further sense. I won't describe it. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Bye, folks.